Welcome to our first ScreenFlow session. During these sessions, I'll go over how to use R in our studio by actually just showing you the screen and talking to you as I'm kind of doing different operations. So it's kind of like me giving you an individualized demo. Before we get started in actually using R, let me kind of just talk about our studio. So I have our studio up and running. Um, this is kind of like a default screen with it barely, uh, barely initialized. So you see in this console area in the um, lower left is kind of the main command line where I type in commands and you'll see that. Up top here on the upper left is where we'll kind of store commands as we use it. We won't probably use it during this first scene session, screen session, but as we go forward we'll use this to, to store our commands and be able to replay them later. On the right side there's a place to view variables and we'll see that as we start to define variables and understand what they are. And then there's a place to look at plots and other types of information that R and RStudio will generate. But let's start by Going down here, if you see the little carrot here, that means R is ready for us to, to begin. So if we want to do maybe the simplest thing possible, let's just type the number one and hit return. And there we can kind of see the answer. It's just echoing back what we did. Um, and what we can do is maybe I'll make this just a little bit larger so you can kind of get a better view as we kind of go through this. And the view we can have um, zoom in. There we go, so now this should be a little easier to see. So we can start to doing some basic, simple commands, um, simple arithmetic just to start. So we can take a look at one plus one, for example, is two. And we can see that every time I type something in the caret, it gives me kind of an answer, it being R or R Studio, And that's the answer there. And now it's back waiting for me to do something. I can do other kinds of simple math, three minus two, for example, how about two times three? All that's kind of what you expect. So it's kind of a simple way to do things. We can also play with some Boolean arithmetic. So let's try, for example, um, one and one. That's true because if you kind of just think about it, if you have one, you kind of order them, and them together, you get one. So you can kind of do different operations like that. Um, let's do some others just to kind of have people remember some Boolean math. So we do one or one. That's also true. We can actually use the words true. So true and false. Mm, what do you think that gives you? That's going to be false, right? Because it's kind of like it's false and true together means means that it's false. But we can do true and true, and that's going to give you true, for example. So this gives you a feeling of how how you can kind of just do very, very simple things using a command line. Again, every time it's kind of getting that arrow, if you want, or kind of carrot sign, whatever you want to call it, that's how it kind of works. And if we do uh, four plus two. What do you think that's going to do? Yep, it gives you an error because it doesn't know about plus. So, um, so that's that's where we kind of can see the the results, right? So it's going to not show us the actual results. It's going to give us the error because it doesn't know four plus, right? So what it really wants is four plus two, and that gives you the obvious answer of six. We can also use um, not true, going back and forth between Boolean and simple math. So what do you think not true does? Not true is false, right? Because that's how it kind of works. Now let's go over some basic variables that we'll kind of create. So a variable is a basically a location to store information. It's a way to store information with an R. If you had a lot of programming experience or even some programming experience in any programming language, you've used the concept of variables and it's the same in R. If you haven't, I will use the next few minutes to kind of give you a feel for it. So let's say uh, I say Jeff is 24. All right, so there's a bunch of things I just did. So I created a variable called Jeff. And remember, the letters J, capital, is case sensitive. So Jeff is different than Jeff. Jeff doesn't exist, but Jeff with a capital does. So going back to this assignment statement, so I said I created a variable called Jeff. And this little operation here, if you remember correctly, it's kind of assigning 24 into Jeff. So now 24 is stored in Jeff. As you can see here, whenever I type Jeff, I get the number 24. So it's kind of a, a logical way to represent this. And I can say Jeff plus one. And there you go, that's 25. So it's kind of different ways to do that. I can do a couple of other assignments. Let's see. Um, I can do, Pat. let's say Pat equals Jeff plus 10. 
note how it doesn't return anything because it stored the results in Pat. If I did Jeff plus 30, that returns it directly. But in the line above it where I'm highlighting it over here, I didn't, I didn't have it returned directly to the console. I had it returned in something called Pat, something being a variable called Pat. So now when I type return there, I get 34, which again is Jeff, which is 24. Remember from up here we assigned it, plus 10. So it's kind of simple math. And now that's stored in Pat. So I've kind of created two different variables, right? I have Jeff and I have Pat. And I can do other kinds of operations, any kind of math operations I want. So I can do, you know, Pat times 2 minus Jeff, and I get a number. So all those kind of simple operations can work. Um, give you kind of a dividing thing. So if I do Pat divided by 2, for example, equal to 17. It's actually 17.5, right? Is that what it is? What is Pat? Pat's 34. No, it's 17. So that's, that kind of works out correctly, right? So I can do division, I can do multiplication, I can do subtraction, and up here, if you remember, I did addition. So those are kind of the basic building blocks, and I can kind of get that going wrong, up and running. How about if I type this? Test equals this is a test. What do you think that generates? Does that generate perhaps an error? Maybe this is a test? Do you think it just kind of returns that, that arrow that we had kind of had before? Or do you think it does something else? Yeah, it's an error because I want to create a text string, but in order to create a text string, I need to actually put the quotes around it. So now if I do that, that works and I have this as a test in my variable called test. So I can type test here and you can see that this is a test shows up. So I can store strings, not just number, I can store strings. But if I want to do test plus one, what's that going to do? It gives me an error. And why do you think it gives me an error? It gives me an error because I have a string and I can't really add one to a string. Remember, I can do pat plus one and that works because pat's a number and one's a number. But here, test is a string and one's a number, so I can't really combine those two. So we have this concept of simple variables. And then what we can do is we can kind of create what's known as a vector, which is kind of like an array, a list of numbers, for example. So I can do create a new variable called ages test, and I can kind of use the variable, and I can say so. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a collection of three numbers and storing it into a vector called ages test. If we want to see what's in ages test, there we go. Right, so my age is test, returns three numbers. To give you some feel for the different numbers, I can access the different numbers. That's the first number, that's the second number. So I'm kind of indexing into the array is the phrase that we would use, and the third number. So remember there's three numbers, three numbers because I created up here. And then if I want to access the first one, I do bracket one, second number, bracket two, third number is bracket three. So that's kind of how those numbers work. Now let's create another vector using the same thing, but this time we'll use our variables. So we have Jeff, Pat, we'll just stop there with two. So now we have something called ages. So I can do ages of one, that's going to be Jeff's age, remember? See, the same. And ages of two, it's going to be Pat's age. Now what happens if I do ages of three and eight, because there's only two places, if you will, locations that I created in my vector. So if I want to access the third one, it says it's not available. Now we can obviously change Jeff. Let's continue to use our newfound knowledge of how to update variables. Now I have Jeff, it's going to equal 14. And what do we show, what will R show if I type this command? So in this command, I want to see the first vector of ages. Remember we created ages with the variable Jeff and Pat. So our choice could be 14, could be 15, 
could be an error, it could be 24. What do you think the answer is? As you can see, it's 24. So now the key thing to remember here is that when we created the vector ages, we used the variables Jeff and Pat, but it made a copy of that data. So when we updated Jeff over here, we made Jeff equal to 14. The ages vector did not change. And that's why ages sub 1 stayed 24, even though the variable Jeff did change. So after we've made this vector ages, Whatever we do to Jeff and Pat doesn't matter because ages is a new vector with kind of new space to store all the information. That's why when we change this, it didn't matter. Now that we have a vector of numbers, we can do different um, functions on it. So one of the basic ones is we can take the mean or average of the ages. If you forgot what ages is, it's those two numbers, 24 and 34. So a mean is kind of the average of that. And we can also just sum them, for example, just adding the two together. How about if we do there? What do we get with that? That's an error, right? Because test doesn't exist. So there's some functions that exist, and a bunch of other functions that obviously don't exist. So if we try to type something and there's a typo, or we thought there was a function that doesn't exist, then we're going to get an error. So if I type in average ages, right, because the real function name is mean ages, okay? Now let's do some vector math. Do ages plus one, you notice it added one to both, 20, so Jeff used to be up, all right, so it used to be 24 and 34, now it's 25 and 35. So this is one of the powerful features of R, it's kind of known as vector math. So when I take a vector of numbers and I add something to it, it adds it to all the numbers at the same time. So I can create a new vector, right, and that's going to be a new age plus one. And then I can do the same kind of operations on that, right? Let's do sum. So now the new age, the sum, is 60 where before the sum was 58, because there was two elements, and I added one to each element. Now let's create one last variable called my age, and let's say I'm going to be 40. Now one thing I can do is I can create a, a variable or a list by continuing to add to it. So I can do ages, and I can add to it my age. Okay, so remember we had ages before up here. You can take a look at it if you forgot. 24 and 34. I created a different variable called new age, but ages hasn't changed. And then what I did is I added a, th a third slot to the vector called my age based on that variable. And so now I've got a vector of length 3 as opposed to a vector of length 2. And I can do all the same sign of operations on that. You can also use if statements to give you a feel for it. Well, let's use it. Yeah, we'll do my age. It's greater than 50. You can write old. It doesn't. I can say if it's less than 50, I can write not so old. Because my age, if you remember, is 40, so it's not greater than, so this does not get executed, is how we would phrase it. And here, it gets executed. Again, if you've had Java or C or C, C Sharp or any of the kind of programming languages, Visual Basic even, this should be very familiar. If you've never seen any uh, programming language before, you know, you can kind of review this a little bit more and, and kind of go over it again. But this is kind of the basics of how to do our programming. And in a sense, it's like every other programming language. The key difference here is we get to do this vector math, as we kind of did up here. Where we took the vector of ages, or a list of numbers, and we can add one to every single one and do a lot of other operations like that. 
we can kind of refine this if statement to say if if um, let's say ages sub one is less than okay. So now I just have two variables. One of them has to be happens to be a vector, an element in a vector. One of them is just a variable. We're, co we're comparing two, and if this statement is true, then we get to execute that statement. This is kind of roughly what we've been working on for the first day, right? So the key is is to get an understanding of how to do some basics, basic variable creation, vector creation, and do some simple math. What I didn't go over, you might have been noticing here, is values. So here, we've this is the different variables that we've created over this session. So if you remember, we created something called test, which was a character string called this is a test. We had Pat, 34. Jeff was 14. If you remember, Jeff was 24, but then we subtracted 10. We had my age, which was 40. And we had a couple of different ages vectors. We had age test, we had ages, we had new age. So we can kind of see all the different numbers here. And again, if you want to kind of curious, we can type ages here. You can see 34, 24, 34, 40, and ages over here, 24, 34, 40. So kind of using our studio going forward, you can kind of get a feeling for all the different variables you've created. And this one shows you that it's a, it's a vector of length three, one to three of type number. And here are the numbers. Obviously, if it gets longer, it doesn't show you all the numbers. And then this shows you it's a simple variable. So I think with that, we'll, we'll stop this session.